Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter, and today I'm gonna to be trying out some of the new Stonehenge craft colored drawing paper. For my card, I decided to use this Darcy's stamp set called All Right, and I'm using the pencil in this particular card. And since it's back to school time, seemed like a good kind of a theme to do for a card. This is the paper. There's a front and a back side. The darker is the front side. And th this is how it compares to the Nina Desert Storm, because I've used that quite a bit. And this is significantly darker than, of course, the Nina. And these are the colors that I'm using, and it's all the Prisma colors that I'm using in this particular card. And what I did was stamp them in some My Favorite Things Grout Gray ink so that I would get a kind of tone-on-tone -tone look. And by the time I finished all my coloring, those lines would really disappear. So I'm coloring right over top of them so it looks like I drew the pencils myself. One of the reasons I like using a colored paper like this is because it increases the contrast because now you have a mid-tone that's laid down and it forces you to use some really punchy colors in order to make them show up. And it also forces you to use some white highlights somewhere and the white highlights are gonna pop against a colored background like this. And that's what I really wanted to try when I bought this pad of Stonehenge. I don't know if this is brand new. I say I'm trying out this new Stonehenge paper, but it's new to me. I did not know that they had craft. They had some other ones that, that were supposed to be not white in a pad. They're supposed to be a mixed color pad. And I was hoping to get something like this in that pad, but it was just various shades of off-white. <laughs> that was not really particularly satisfying to get that one. So I was happy when I saw that this came up in my hey, you bought something similar to this, you should buy this. And I decided to pick up a pad of it. And I was generally pleased with it. I like Stonehenge paper, the surface of their white papers, and even those off-white papers are fine. The surface of it is, it feels a little bit more like a hot press watercolor paper, if you know what that feels like. Very soft and a very fine texture. And that tends to hold the pencil really nicely. It pulls enough pigment off of the pencil itself, but it also doesn't create extra texture by being too textured. If you picture a mountain range and you're coloring across the top of a mountain range, you want the, the pigment to go down into the valleys, not just sit on the tops of the mountains. Because when you get that those little white spots or paper color spots in between, you get that because of the pencil skipping over the peaks and valleys in an uneven way. This paper has such a fine texture that it tends to work really nicely. Now, the one on the left is the front of the pad of paper, and so if you buy it in a pad, then you'll always know which one's the front because that's the one facing up. The back side of it is on the right, and I found that that had more uneven texture shall we say, than the front side did. Uh, the front, I could get a really nice even strip of color regardless of having to, I didn't have to work really hard. I did have to work harder to get it a little bit more even on the right hand side and I didn't even succeed in that in a whole lot. And I kind of didn't try too hardly hard because I wanted a little more of an apples to apples comparison when I got done. And I will show you them both really close so you can see what that texture ends up looking like. Doing this no line technique means you do have to draw the eyes back in. You can color around the mouth, but it's really hard to color around the eyes. But you can also move them when you do that. So if you decide you want your face in a different place, then you could just move the eyes up or down or do whatever you want with them. And the eyes here the way that they've drawn them is basically an oval with little eyelashes coming off and a little white dot for the highlights. So I just thought that would be really cute to do them on top. And you could play around with what pen you have that would go over top of colored pencil, but by the time it gets on top of that pigment, a pen might not stay, meaning it might, it might not adhere to the wax of the pencil particularly much. So you may not be satisfied with that. So a really super sharp 
black pencil will get you that kind of detail. On the white portions here, the, the white pencil down below, I put down a little bit of the shading first and then went into the white. And here I'm using the white first and then putting some shading, this kind of bluish slate blue color. On top, you can go either direction and you can just layer those colors. The harder you press, the less you're gonna be able to layer. And that's one of the reasons that the Stonehenge paper makes a big difference to me, because I don't have to press as hard, which means I don't get that buildup as early. So I'm able to do a lot more layering and add more color to it and make things pop more. I decided to add a little bit to the band that's around the end of the pencil, just to create a little bit of interest there so it wasn't just all these really simple shapes. And then went over with a kind of a tan pencil to color the wood and then decided to use that for part of the eraser as well. But I wanted a highlight on the eraser. So I put the highlight down first and then just went over it with that tan pencil. And then I get a couple shades of that one pencil when I go over part of it with the or under part of it with the white and then over it with the color itself. And then I added a little bit of that 944 just to add a, a reddish brown shadow on one side. And that is one of the pencils. The other two I am going to color in super fast mode because you've now seen one of them. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about my love for Prismacolors. A lot of people don't like them. I totally get that. If you've bought a box that was a bum box or that got dropped in shipping or you've dropped it in your studio or your children played with it and dropped it or something, uh, you may have gotten a lot of bro broken pencil leads. And there are people that have had that issue. I have been using these for 25, 30, 40, uh, yeah, I'm going to not even tell you how many years since college. And I have never had a massive problem just with one pencil or two here and there. I've had a pencil lead that just kind of would never sharpen. It would just keep breaking. I have never had the problem with a whole box of them. And I know a lot of people have. So I, you know, I'm not denying that that's your experience, but I literally have not had that happen to me. So I don't, I don't have a, an inner hatred of Prismacolors like some people have a visceral reaction when I color with my Prismacolors. I like these as much as I like Polychromos and all the other pencils that I use. Totally fine. The coloring I can do with any of them works about the same. I don't find that one works better or worse than the others, personally. And I'm able to achieve great results with any of them. So whatever you can afford, I always say get the best you can afford, the closest to artist grade, because that's just, you're going to get better results from that in general. Uh, this yellow, there was a really big difference between the dark yellow and the mid yellow that I chose. You can see the colors up top there. So I just added a little layer of that mid yellow to the center of the pencil. And then I added a little scribble coming off of each one of the pencils, which I thought would be kind of a fun little thing, uh, getting it bigger toward the front so it almost has some dimension on the card, you know, going back into space. The yellow, I wished I hadn't picked the dark yellow to do that with because it looked kind of weak. So I tried going over some of it with the medium yellow and it didn't work all that great, but you know, sometimes you gotta fix what you messed up in the first place. And there's that. So I added those little things and then I decided I needed some sort of a baseline so my pencils would have a floor of some sort on my card. I wasn't really sure what to do so I took a grayish pencil and well actually I took the black first and added just a line there for my horizon on my my cards and then added just a little haze of gray between the pencils going upwards so that there would be just a little bit of contrast right around that, those white sides of each one of those, the wood and the pencil tip would kind of pop more. And then I took my cards and added them onto card bases with a little popped sentiment. Now here's the difference between those two on the right hand side is the, uh, the back side of the paper and on the left hand side is the front. Definitely use the front of the paper. I found that that worked better. You can definitely get results from the back 
but I would recommend sticking with the front of the paper because you're just going to get a little denser color a little more quickly with a lot less work. So if you're interested in seeing something else with this particular stamp set, I do have a watercolor that's going to go up on uh, Instagram TV later today. And if you're watching later on, then I will have a link in the doobly-doo directly to it. Otherwise, go follow my Instagram. And I will see you guys later on. Have a great day. Bye-bye.